segment, I'm going to continue discussing how we can organize our data to identify patterns. So we've talked a little bit about frequency histograms. I showed you how to make one in PowerPoint. And I'd like to kind of review that a little bit and then talk about grouped frequency histograms. So these are the two that we're going to focus on in this video, frequency histograms and frequency polygons. So in making a histogram for both grouped and ungrouped data, you'll make sure that you put your um, scale of intervals from low to high on the x-axis and the scale of frequencies on the y-axis. Remember the x-axis is your horizontal axis and your y-axis is your vertical axis. The bars should touch on an interval or ratio scale. That's the other piece. And I did show you how to do that in PowerPoint. So here you'll notice that this is a ratio scale, the bars touch, and that you have your x-axis here as the different values that you get. And then here's your, your frequency of scores on the y-axis. The question that a lot of people um, get a little bit confused about or find tricky with grouped frequency histograms is figuring out what the midpoints of the intervals are. So with a grouped frequency histogram, we're going to take our data from a grouped frequency table. So you'll need to construct that first. Then the x-axis values are going to be based on interval midpoints. Like I said, this is the part that a lot of people find tricky. So this is something that you'll want to pay attention to. And then you'll want to plot the frequency of the observation for a particular interval over the midpoint of that interval's value. So how do we find then what the midpoint of the interval is? I have a set of intervals here. Um, you'll see that they range from 8 to 9. And remember that this 8 to 9 is really 8 to 9.999 because our bottom of the next interval starts at 10.0. Okay, So we're going to take the bottom of the second lowest interval, which is 10, and we'll subtract out the bottom of the lowest interval, which is 8. And then we'll divide that value by 2 because that will give us the midpoint of the interval. So in this case, 10 minus 8 is 2, divided by 2 is 1. So now we're going to take that value then of 1 and add it to the bottom of each of the intervals to find the midpoint. So in our first case, it looks kind of weird, but it turns out that that midpoint is 9 because, like I said, this is an interval size of 2, 8 to 8.999 and 9 to 9.999. So the midpoint is actually not. So we can go ahead then and fill in our values by adding the, uh, the value of 1 to the bottom side of that interval. And so you'll notice that it ends up being the same as the upper end of our interval because um, we haven't put our decimal values in place. So if we go back, this is for those Stroop task reaction time values again. So if we do go back to that particular graphic, you'll see it says 9, 11, 13, 15, and 17, which is what we had on the previous slide, 9, 11, 13, 15, and 17. So that's how you would find those values. Now what I'd like to do is show you how to go about and doing a, making a frequency histogram, a group frequency histogram, based on the last example that I gave you for percent of alumni who give to their alma mater for the top 70 U.S. universities. So what I can do is, well, first I need to find out what my midpoints of my intervals are. I have my frequencies, I have my intervals, and again, our formula here to find this out is going to be saying something like, oh, the bottom of the second interval is 10. Let's make this bigger. Okay. The bottom of the second interval is 10, and the bottom of the interval below it is 0. So we'll say 10 minus 0. 
And then we're going to take that quantity, make sure you put the parentheses around it, otherwise you're going to end up with 10 minus 0 um, and not divide it by 2. So 10 minus 0 divided by 2. And that'll give us 5 for the midpoint of this bottom interval. Or, I'm sorry, that will get, well, actually it ends up being 5 for the midpoint of the bottom interval. But what it also does is it tells us that is how many we need to add to the bottom of each interval to get our midpoints. So if we wanted to create a new column here and call it midpoint, then all we need to do is take the bottom of each interval and add 5. So I can just do that in my head. It's pretty easy here. So we have 15. Let's make these all bigger. There we go. 15, 25, So we have all of our intervals, uh, midpoints, that we'd like to put on our x-axis. And then we have these frequencies that we'll plot on our y-axis. So the next step here is to go to the Insert tab. And you'll see that we have all of these options for different kinds of uh, charts that we could include in our spreadsheet. And what we'd like to add is a column chart. So I can go ahead and choose 2D column. I'm going to move this out of the way so I can actually see what's going on here. Okay. So I have my column, column chart. So I have my column chart. And I'm going to come up here and I'm going to choose my data. But one of the things that I'm going to have to do before I do that is actually change the order of the data that I have. And that reason is because of the way the format is in Excel, and it wants the values to be in um, ascending order from top to bottom. So what I do is I select all of the data that I want to sort, and then I come over to Sort and Filter and Custom Sort. And I can come over, make sure this box is not checked, my data has headers, because I did not select the header row. And then I'm going to sort by column C because we already know that those midpoints are in order, but they happen to be in the reverse order from what we want. And I say smallest to largest. Okay, so now I have the data in the order that I'd like it to be. And I can come back over here to design and say select data. Now first I want to get my data range and I'm going to select my frequencies. I'll come over here and select my frequencies and click this little icon. And now you can see, it looks right, doesn't it, um, that we have all of these different frequencies here. We have R0. Um, but what we don't have is the right thing for our horizontal category axis labels. And that's what we're going to use our midpoints as, is axis labels. So I can come over here and say I'm going to select my data. And I'm going to choose from that midpoint column. And then, there I go. I've got all of those midpoints. So now, we've got our data selected. And the next thing we want to do is kind of um, change some of our layout, some of our design here. So I'm going to get rid of the legend again, because we don't have enough complications that we need that. I'm going to get rid of these um, horizontal grid lines. And then I want to change these data so that, just like I formatted the data series before, that there's not any gap between the two. And we'll say, OK. And in terms of design, we probably want to have some sort of outline on these just so we can see. There, that looks pretty good. Okay, so now we have all of our data here, and since our highest value is 24, the format of the y-axis is probably pretty good. The only thing we really need to add here 
is our data labels, I'm sorry, our um, axis titles. So for the horizontal axis, we'll say percent of, percent of giving. And then for our vertical axis title, And then the other thing that we'd want to do, the last thing we want to do here is also add a chart title. So we can say percent frequency histogram. Position. So I think I'm going to change that above the chart. There we go. And I might actually change the size of my chart so I can see it a little bit better. Okay, so there we have a frequency histogram, a grouped frequency histogram for our data on alumni. And you can see the shape of this distribution is that it's positively skewed. We've got this one observation that 61% of the alumni give. Um, so if we wanted to change this then to a frequency polygon, I think we can copy this sheet. Copy. Okay. So now we have a copy of this, and if we wanted to change to a um, different kind of chart, we could change it to a line chart and say, okay. Now it's pretty much set up the way we need it to, except for now we need to add two more intervals, one before and one after. So this one before is going to actually be negative five because it needs to be a full interval below where we are now. The formats off, but that's okay. Okay, and this should be 75. And we'll bump that text size up so you can see it. There. Okay. So we have some new data to add to this frequency histogram and we don't really need to do too much to change what we've already done. We do need to change our data selection range. So series one um, we need to say okay let's find our data. And so here oops we can add something there. We need to add the zero in. Um, the other thing we need to do is edit this and select our data for the labels. I'll come over here and select these data. Okay. So, okay. so now I've added two new intervals. And I'm going to come back over here and put zero in. Ah, there we go. So the thing that you'll notice is that we need to have a polygon that starts an interval in addition below and an interval above. And they both need to touch the zero mark, the x-axis. And so here we have a frequency polygon. So just to wrap up, frequency polygons are almost exactly the same as grouped frequency histograms. But we do need to have that, uh, we connect those data points, those midpoints with lines. They need to be anchored at zero, which means that we need to have a frequency interval um, that falls below and above.